A fiancé visa or a marriage visa? What's the difference? Watch this video and learn. Hello everybody, Jacob Zapashnik here, immigration attorney based in San Diego, California. We serve clients in all 50 states and around the world. In this video, we'll talk about the difference between a K-1 visa, a fiancé visa, and a marriage visa. So let's start by explaining briefly what is a K-1 fiancé visa. So a fiancé visa is, is usually reserved for people that are engaged to U.S. citizens only. You cannot be engaged to a green card holder because a fiancé visa only works with U.S. citizens. And it's reserved for people that cannot come to the U.S. with any other form, uh, form of visas but the K-1 visa. And the purpose of their arrival to the U.S. would be to marry the U.S. citizen within 90 days. If the plan is not to marry within 90 days, the K-1 visa is not going to work because if if the couple is not going to get married in, th in three months, then the fiancé must return to the home country. And so it's useful sometimes for couples that are not sure yet if they want to, um, uh, to file the marriage case at, a po at the moment. It's, it's important if the fiancé wants to try life in the U.S. for a few months before they get married. But it's also important for people that are not able to get married abroad for many reasons. And so, and sometimes people feel that a fiancé visa is a good way to do that because they can come to the U.S., you know, try to live in the U.S. with the U.S. citizen for a few months and then make a decision. It's also important to understand that the fiancé visa can be sometimes quicker than a marriage visa. A marriage visa is reserved to green card holders that want to file an I-130 for their, um, for their spouses or for U.S. citizens that want to immigrate their spouses. So it can be both for green card holders and U.S. citizens. The difference is that if a green card holder files for their spouse, they're going to go um, into a wait, into a waiting period, subject by the visa bulletin, because green card holders cannot give immediate benefits to their spouses. It may take a few years. If it's a U.S. citizen, if the spouse is in the U.S., inside the U.S. as a tourist or a student or any other visa, they can proceed to file for an adjustment of status and then finish that process within six months or so. If the the spouse is overseas, the U.S. citizen spouse can file Form I-130, initiate the process, then go through the National Visa Center, and eventually the, the, the spouse will be in the U.S. within a year or so. It's slightly longer than a fiancé visa, but it can be accomplished after marriage. So again, the main difference between a fiancé visa and uh, a marriage visa is that, first of all, for a fiancé visa, the couple, they don't have to be married. They can, start, they, they can initiate the process once they get engaged, while the U.S. citizen is in the U.S. and the fiance is overseas, therefore saving some time. That process can be quicker many times. The marriage visa is useful because once you finish that process, you arrive to the U.S. with an immigrant visa and you get your green card right away. When you come with a fiance visa, once you're in the U.S. and you marry within 90 days, you have to file for an adjustment of status, which adds another step to the process and make it more expensive as well. It really depends on the couple. Some couples are more traditional. They want to go through the fiancé route first. They want to be able to come to the U.S. They want to experience the life here. They want to be able to test the relationship by living here together. Sometimes those couples, um, it's the first time they actually live together. You know, we have a, we have a client right now, uh, a U.S. citizen, an executive who's been traveling to China back and forth, and he met his fiancé over there, and they never had a chance to live together. So there, for them, the fiancé visa was a perfect option because his fiancé arrived to the U.S., we got them here, they lived together for a few months, and then they wanted to get married, they got married, and then we proceeded with getting their adjustment of status. So this is kind of the main difference between a fiancé visa and a marriage visa. It really depends on the couple, it really depends on the situation, but it's good to know that there is the option of doing a fiancé visa before marriage, and there's an option to file for a marriage visa once you're already married, and that will also have two options. The spouse is uh, overseas, or if the spouse is in the U.S., the couple can proceed with adjustment of status and finalize the green card inside the U.S. This is a very common question that we get, so hopefully you understood the difference between a K-1 fiancé visa and a marriage visa. If you have any other questions, post them in the comments below or email them to me to jacob at h1b.biz and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Let us know what other videos you'd like to see and I'll be happy to make them for you. And we'll see you in our next video. Thanks for watching.